Okay, great. It's a delight to be here. Um, it's especially delightful to have Padma here as the International Humanitarian of the Year with Enterprise Mentors. Um, I would also like to recognize very quickly Debbie Gilmore. Debbie, could you stand up with Enterprise Mentors? And Amy Antonelli, who is the Executive Director of Rising Star Outreach. Um, and appreciate them being here today. Okay, Here we go. You know, really, for thousands of years, leprosy has been a plague in India, destroying literally millions of lives. When I first went to India um, several years ago, I had a difficult time even, I'm going to come over here. Can you all see me if I do this? Really, even looking at the leprosy affected beggars, OK, that approached us on the streets, because um, you know, their suffering was just almost palpable. They would come up every time the car came to an intersection to beg. They were missing some of the hands. Eyes were blind or going blind, missing feet. They had many open wounds that were obvious. Um, one man put his hand up to beg with maggots crawling through his hand. It was difficult to look at that kind of suffering. When I got back from India, I couldn't sleep because of the images that haunted me at night, and finally decided that I could have insomnia forever, or maybe I could do something about it. So I called three of my friends over to my home, dragged in my husband's secretary, and we started a very small organization called Rising Star Outreach, dedicated to serving the leprosy affected of India. Well, we had no idea where to start. We started out initially just doing humanitarian work, bringing rice and beans and saris, to the colonies, and literally we would take our pocket knives and dig out their rotten wounds. Can you just forward this for me um, again? Thank you. Because um, they just needed it, and it was some small thing we could do. But it didn't take us very long at all to figure out that if we fed them today, we had to come back and feed them again tomorrow. We weren't really improving their lives any. And so we hungered to find a way to make their lives more meaningful. Okay? Um, you know, they've lived for thousands of years in India as beggars on this street. And the people fear them because, because they, they're, they're kind of scary. They're deformed, and they have a lot of wounds and things. And so we just felt like they ha we had to find a way to help them to become productive, productive citizens of India and not beggars, but how to start, where to start. OK, next slide. You know, the leprosy affected have a lot of challenges. We all hear about the microlending kind of miracle we talk about sweeping the earth right now, and all kinds of poor people being brought from poverty into, um, into a situation where they can provide for their families. But no one's able to do it with the leprosy affected. There have been some studies done that say that it simply microlending cannot work. With three major populations, the leprosy affected, the HIV um, infected pop population, and the migrant workers. So they've just been ignored by all this. And so we had no idea where to turn, really. Then we got a chance to meet Pema Venkatraman. OK. Um, and, and through her, she had developed, she'd been working with the leprosy affected for 20 years, and she had developed a microlending system that was incredibly successful. Um, even given all their challenges. The challenges just will quickly are they oftentimes don't have fingers or even hands. What stumps they do have left um, have no feeling in them because leprosy attacks the uh, nervous system. And so how can you get these people to create products um, that could be marketed? They, um, oftentimes their eyesight is bad or they've actually even gone completely blind. They have feet that don't get around very easily because of the impact of leprosy. So how can they get the goods to market? And finally, they suffer a terrible stigma because, again, what you don't know, you fear. And so um, in India, there's a great stigma. And so if they could produce things to eat, nobody would buy it. And so the challenges are huge. But Padma has been able, able to overcome this is tremendous. Okay. Um, she has became our partner and insisted that we have a holistic approach, that we don't just treat them economically. And I think this is so wise. You know, poverty is not just a lack of money. Because you could give a microloan to a woman, and she could be earning money for the first time in her life. 
but if she's beaten every night by her husband, how much better really is her life? You, you have to treat all the aspects of poverty. People that, that are affected by poverty usually suffer from a poverty of education, a poverty of opportunity, a poverty of morals, a poverty of spirit. And you have to treat all these things in order to have an effective healing organization. So under her guidance, we've done a number of things. Okay, quickly next. We've started um, medical rehabilitation, where we now have real doctors that treat their wounds and that screen, okay? Um, okay. Um, screening for new cases of leprosy is extremely important so that we can stop it before it begins. You know, you catch it early and there's no problem, there's no disfigurement, okay? Um, this little girl, Jennifer, a child in one of the colonies we work in, um, she has dry leprosy. You see where she's, oh, we have too much light here. Could we cut down on the light a little bit, whoever does the, ah, perfect. But can you see where she's missing the pigment in her skin on her shoulder? At this point, leprosy is, most people don't know they have it. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't itch, but it's very easy to cure. In Jennifer's case, it took one packet of a multi-drug therapy, and now today she's completely cured. Next slide. Um, here she is, two years later, holding a picture of herself on the front of our pamphlet, and you can see she has no leprosy at all. At this point, she was still in the colony and was on the waiting list for the school that we run, um, and because of a long waiting list. Next slide. And here she is. She's now in the school. And this is her today. I mean, it's, the difference is massive. So we run a school. Next slide. Um, for the children of the colonies. Often, oftentimes, the parents are tempted to use them as beggars on the streets because people tend to give more to children beggars than they do to adults. And so their, their future, they just don't get the schooling and things they need. So we started next a school where it's a boarding school. The children live in these dormitories, okay? And this is the school. <laughs> Kids cute or what? <laughs> um, where they're learning to be productive citizens of India instead of that next generation of, lepros, uh, of beggars on the street, okay? And here the kids are um, sprinting to school the first day we opened the school, really excited to have the opportunity to have a life and rise out of their circumstances, okay? The school is taught in English because it's the main determinant of your success in India. All business is done in English, okay? And we have a state-of-the-art computer lab there. So we're training the kids to be employed by the multinational companies that we have partnerships with who have agreed to hire our kids when, they're when they graduate, if they're qualified. So these kids literally will come from the very, very bottom of society and be put in at the very top and will begin to change the stigma that has affected these people for so long. These are just all wonderful ideas that Padma has propagated. She's, we're gonna ask her, okay, next slide. Um, we're gonna ask her to explain the methodology that she developed and how, um, how it can be applied not only in India, but throughout the world anytime there is a marginalized population like this. Um, she's the fa her father was the former president of India President Ramaswamy Venkatraman. Padma was the permanent re representative of the All Indian Women's Conference at the United Nations for 20 years. She was the vice president of the Women's India Association. She's the vice president of the International Committee on the Status of Women at the United Nations. She's, you can begin to get a, a theme here. She was then president of the United Nations Women's Guild. And she is um, on the board of directors of the National Red Cross in India and is a global trustee of the global um, cancer concern in India. A woman who is known for her work with the most, truly the poorest of the poor. She could have chosen to live her life in luxury, enjoying her family's prestige and influence, but instead she has followed the Gandhian path that her father um, started and she has left all that to serve those that are truly the most needy in India. Please join me in welcoming Padma Venkatraman. Can you hear me at the back? I suppose so. Thank you very much for giving, giving me this opportunity to share my experience with you. I'm really overwhelmed by the presence of so many people, the interest that you all show, is I'm really very thankful to, for this uh, major opportunity. 
Actually, I started the work of uh, socio-economic re rehabilitation of uh, leprosy affected people from 20 years ago. At the time, this uh, microcredit term was not very widely used. And particularly with the leprosy affected people, nobody even thought that uh, you can give loan and that they will be able to re repay and they will be able to do something, you know, to earn money. This is unheard of. Neither the patients themselves believe, nor the society, nor me. <laughs> but I wanted, I, right from beginning, I said, nothing should be given free. See, you can just give some few dollars uh, today. Again and again, they will be come back to square one, and they will be hungry. They will, you will have to feed them. And you cannot go back to the donors again and again to feed such people. So I kept thinking, something I have to do, which will be permanent, which uh, will be helpful for them, which will be sustainable, not uh, just uh, help them. But that was uh, impossible at the time. And first, initially, I uh, just uh, uh, thought of uh, cooperating with them. I said, it's all your work. We'll have to discuss and we'll have to see what is possible, what can be done. Uh, so uh, then uh, the, for, throughout uh, India, we did a survey. What is their aptitude? What do they want? Uh, and what is their physical capability? Unless uh, we know all this uh, information, we won't be able to uh, see what, what exactly can be done. In Delhi, which I started the work, now I just go there as a guest because uh, they are all well settled and they have a women's self-help group, children's education, the schools, and uh, computer classes. After 20 years, many of the youth who joined the computer class, they are all working in the IT companies. So it's so rewarding to go and see that people who thought I can't do and the society who thought they can't do, they are all thriving and uh, thriving with so many economic activities. So I really wish anybody who is coming to Delhi, I would like to take you all uh, for, for a tour of this uh, place. It's called Village of Hope. We have provided uh, houses for 800 families. So it's really, it, this shows that it can be done. So the, the first uh, program was given to me by United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization. So they said it should be replicated in other parts of India because it is sustainable. This is how I, when I came back from Vienna, Austria, to settle down in India, there's a, this Danish International Development Agency. They uh, supported me with a project for, for a period of five years, and I could take it to the entire Tamil Nadu and uh, replicate more or less what I did in uh, Delhi. So, this, so the same uh, success story can be repeated. So again, I started with the survey to ascertain what is their capability, what is their aptitude, everything. Then I really believe that it, the interest should come from them instead of me going and saying that you do this, it will be good for you. And initially they were all quiet, nobody will. But later on you can see how many hands are going up, how they are participating actively. That really helped me to uh, really interact with them. And really, they thought it is my project. It is our project. So uh, that's a participatory feeling was uh, really helpful for the success of the program. And uh, training is an integral part of uh, microcredit. If you just go and give uh, credit to the people, they won't be able to do anything at all. They might lend it out to somebody else. This also happened initially once or twice. And then return the money, but they won't benefit. They won't do anything. They'll uh, charge some interest to other people. So you have to be very careful when you give money. Money alone is not enough. You have to give them a lot of training. We gave a lot of training, spent a lot of time in giving training, training the trainers so that those people will go and train other people in other colonies. So it had a ripple effect. We had a training center. We would uh, select those people to get training. And then they go out and uh, give training to all the colonies. Uh, throughout the state. So, then you give them credit. First, a theoretical uh, uh, explanation, and then you give them credit. And then uh, this, uh, after the next picture, then that's because they have this uh, deformities in the hand, uh, you have to take all those things into consideration. For normal people, you just give credit and, uh, and tell them what to do, how to go about business they will be able to do it and then return your money and they will also benefit. Here they are, they are handicapped 
they have lot of deformities and uh, numbness in the hands because uh, the nervous system has been affected. So we have to really uh, give some tools for them to handle all those things. So there was a Dr. Atul Shah from Bombay who came down to South and gave them training, uh, conducted workshop and our doctors from Rising Star Outreach, we also attended the workshop and he said, this is my methodology. The, my aim is to make people uh, go without ulcer. When we talk about stigma and all that, when the people have ulcer, that is one reason why people are afraid to go near them or they don't want to go near. And it is possible to make them ulcer free. So this doctor has uh, taught us how to uh, do it. And then he has prepared a kit called self-care kit. And he said, and also he also had straps. Uh, that's a very simple thing. If there is a strap around the hand and there is a pouch, you put a spoon or if you want to drink water, you stick one uh, glass a holder and then you can have a holder glass. And if they are doing any uh, economic activities, we also put tools inside. So this is how we have to empower them physically. And uh, this lady, uh, when I gave her the strap, after a week I came and asked her, what, how do you find it? Is it useful? Are you using it? She told me that for the first time in her life, she drank water when she was 30, thirsty without waiting for somebody to come and give it to her. So this, this much useful, sim simple thing, but uh, this is so useful to them. The next picture. This is, we also have a women's self-help group. This is the best poverty alleviation program. I'm sure the business students would be very much interested. Uh, this is the women form groups and uh, more than 10, less than 20, more because if it is more than 20, they'll have to pay tax, all this uh, thing. They are all uneducated people, so they cannot handle all those things. So we said uh, below 20, and uh, this group should meet very often and start uh, earning, uh, saving money. This inculcate the saving habits, first time among the women in India. They have to save money, and they have to keep records, how they save money, how much money they save, how they go to, the, uh, they are given uh, training to go to bank, deposit the amount they have uh, saved and take a small amount from this in order to get them gain some experience in, uh, in finance, self-financing. They have to start small business and uh, the bank will see for over a period of 10 months to 12 month period how they are doing it, if they are successful. Uh, if not, then they come and give uh, training, further training uh, where they are lacking some training. And after this, the bank gives them loan. Like the government of India has said that uh, the bank should help these self-help group people so that uh, they get uh, credit. Or when the donors give, we are able to give them the seed money, which they keep it rotating among themselves. So the women's self-help group, we are able to address so many other issues like uh, uh, ch children, child care, or uh, nutrition, hygiene, anything about uh, women's issues. We are able to address everything in this uh, through this, and women are really getting empowered in India. In one whole village, we gave them bicycle, and till then they were they were waiting. The, the next time when I visited, they all said, "Now previously we had to, the, our husbands will not take us to the doctors, and if we were sick, we will just sit at home, uh, take some hot water or lemon or whatever the homemade remedies." But now, since we drive the bike, we keep our husbands at the back seat and drive them to the hospital. <laughs> this much of empowerment is, uh, is possible because of the women's self-help group. And uh, the methodology, when we talk about the met, uh, special, unique methodology that I apply for these people, because I went through the normal procedure of microcredit, and uh, people keep, uh, kept saying that uh, microcredit is not appropriate for few people, and one among them is a leprosy affected people or migrant laborers. And I thought instead of saying it is not applicable, let us think how we can make it applicable for them. So we sat together, we discussed and discussed, and then we came up with one uh, idea that uh, each colony will select five to seven members, and we call it a welfare committee. And these members are entirely responsible for uh, collecting the loan, depositing it in the bank, 
and uh, scrutinizing the new loans and giving me the monthly report along with the bank statement. So now the entire responsibility is on the shoulder. The money is entirely uh, their money. It is their money in their bank. So they really showed lot of interest. And after that, I never had any failure in any of these colonies. When I gave money and uh, took it back, they said, please don't uh, charge 3%. Please don't charge 5% interest. We can't afford. We are all poor people, this and that. When I gave the entire responsibility to them, I said, you decide on the interest how much you want. They charge 10% interest. <laughs> <laughs> because they know that money is within their hands and it is uh, their money. They can, if they put even 10%, they can make use of that money. So that is really useful. And this is the, that is a meeting that once a month they used to come and report to us. So this method really works for them and 98% success rate. And we have a lot of success stories. So can we And we also believe in partnering with the other organizations. Now, Rising Star Outreach is partnering with uh, uh, Women's Indian Association, Ramachandra Medical College, and, so, uh, and many other uh, non-profit organizations. So many of them have a lot of expertise in different fields. So when we come together, we are really able to achieve a lot. So what was the result of all the effort? This was the result. This man uh, got a very small loan in the beginning say $20 to start with, and started buying vegetables and all that. Then when uh, he really gained experience, see initially they would even buy vegetable or something for a higher price and sell it for lower price because they, they are not used to. But to store, that is why I gave them only a very small loan initially. So along with the theoretical uh, uh, training, they have to have practical training. And after some practical training, it's sky is the limit. They come up with all sorts of ideas. This man, I don't have to help him anymore at all. He has a big bank balance. Now, this is his mini mall. <laughs> he has everything you can ask for. You know, He has vegetables, he has fruits, and uh, he has shampoo, cookies, whatever you one needs, and he has got everything. And he has a big balance, so a bank balance. So uh, it's completely he's uh, free from all this uh, clutches of money lenders, he doesn't have to go to anybody. So totally he is independent now. And sustainability is established. That is very important uh, because uh, suppose uh, you go for the uh, same reason again and again to the same donor. Naturally it doesn't uh, look nice and uh, you are also not happy about it. So by, through this methodology, if you give the seed money to one colony for micro business, they are able to rotate it, sustainability is established, and uh, all the entire, the management, everything is done by them. So uh, you don't have any administrative expenditure. Uh, in my, this thing, in all these 30, 30 colonies, administrative expenditure is zero. Uh, they do everything. They just take a small amount to uh, send the report and all that. That's all. So it's amazing. And when they, when Becky visited uh, India, they were so proudly, they came and showed how much money they had in the bank. <laughs> uh, so uh, we, having said this, we have a lot of uh, things to do in future. And well, India is such a big country. Now we are working here in South India, uh, in this part. So when I was working from the beginning, it was uh, North India, Delhi. Now uh, Rising Star, I met them in 2004. We are taking care of the entire Tamil Nadu. Uh, so for the past uh, five years with uh, Rising Star and for 15 years with other uh, organizations. So now we want to move to other parts of India where there is more need. Uh, there is a national forum for leprosy rehabilitation. The government of India had the national leprosy eradication program through which they brought down the number of new incidents by uh, attending on the medical side of it. At the time, they want to concentrate on that, so they, had, uh, they did not uh, deviate their attention on socioeconomic rehabilitation. Now, since we have uh, achieved that uh, elimination status, WHO says if you have one per person for 10,000, then the country is said to have eliminated leprosy. India has reached that stage. So uh, now we are shifting from medical attention to uh, 
this uh, socioeconomic uh, rehabilitation. So we had this national forum is focusing on uh, at the national level, what is our policy, what can be done. And we have regional conferences and all that. All the 80% of members are from leprosy colonies. And uh, they are the delegates. They fly to conferences. They attend conferences like this in a beautiful conference hall. So the things have changed so much. And when uh, they are, we are able to uh, reach out to many more people uh, because of uh, this national forum. Through them, we, can, we will be able to reach out to many, many more people. The impact of... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I will just uh, give you, there are thousands of stories, because uh, in the pa past 20 years, I have collected a lot of stories. I will give you just one or two stories. This lady was uh, given a loan for this cow. Uh, she had two female calf, and when that calf was one and a half years was old, started yielding milk, she told her husband, you can now take care of it, you can earn money, you can answer, but this only on loan. And uh, the husband was really stunned, and the Indian woman saying that uh, I'll give it to you only on loan. And uh, <laughs> he was really, really, really very angry. He could not digest this, that uh, she would not give it to him on uh, just free. And but later on, after a month when I visited them, he was so happy because between them, they have saved a lot of money and then bank balance was increasing. And he said, now I have so much money in the bank, I'm going to spend it on my son's education, higher education. And uh, next, uh, in another six months time, my daughter is going to be married. So we, they are very happy to have a good bank balance. And uh, this couple was living in government uh, home. This is like a home for homeless people. Government of India also has home for leprosy affected people where uh, shelter, food and other things are free. But uh, human beings want freedom. You know, there's uh, much less freedom in any home. So they really want, were looking for an opportunity to have their own freedom, have their own property. This lady got the loan for agricultural work and he got a loan for that uh, cow. Between them, they saved uh, enough money to buy that piece of land and uh, the, they put up the house out of their savings, entirely out of their savings. There are many more people who have got a small property like this through microfinance. And this uh, man is a carpenter. Uh, he contracted the disease and he was in, admitted in the hospital for three years. So when he came out of the hospital, he had lost everything, no tools, no clients, nothing. And he was going from home to home. Whoever gave them food, he would eat and just sleep wherever there was a place. And when I was uh, distributing microcredit, he came for that meeting. He told me, he just give me a small loan. I, I'll, I'll buy the tools. He's very, very diligent. He started with that small loan. With a, he now employs 12 people under him. He makes one of the mo most beautiful carvings. And uh, all of us buy a lot of things from him the cart and the door and all. The village people now uh, buy, um, uh, they uh, invite him to come to their house and put up the houses, the doors, and uh, fix the doors and windows and all that. So the stigma will automatically go as and when your economic status come up. And uh, he is a very trustworthy person also. He is very prompt. So the village people love him. And he, he goes there. And he also trains people from village the two people who have got training under him have started shops now, the, uh, you know, the carpenter shop. And uh, an Austrian friend of mine, uh, he's an artist, uh, he came down to South and he started an art school for the leprosy affected people. <coughs> and uh, they're all crippled, look at her, and she has no hands, nothing, she's almost bent over. And uh, these people, uh, initially, they never believed that uh, they can hold a brush and do anything at all. First of all, they have no hands. Secondly, they have never touched a brush in their life. But uh, their painting, their uh, paintings are, uh, their exhibition is going all around uh, India, Europe, in America. I think two years ago, Becky got some pictures and showed it here and sold for $30,000. And <laughs> the whole of Europe, it's, it's really doing very well. Now I have enough uh, bank balance to run the school for the next three years without going in for any loan or 
asking for any donation. So, this is how, you know, this, uh, the hand, you can see how crippled it is, but uh, this man was one of the best uh, artists, and he would uh, labor himself so much to put dots and small lines, minute lines. Uh, when I took all these people to Marriott Hotel in uh, Chennai, uh, the staff and the manager came to them and said, we have learned so much from you. I asked the manager, are you just simply saying this or do you, do you really mean it? They said, uh, we, we really mean it because they have no hands. They have lost everything in life. Uh, one can say, I can't do anything and sit at home and grumble about the whole thing. But they are so cheerful and they are creating some something. So this is a lesson for us that we don't have to, we shouldn't grumble about anything at all. So, and uh, we have a lot of uh, volunteers coming from a Rising Star Outreach. It's a great program because volunteers from all the universities, when you people come there, you will really enjoy, you will all of, I have never heard anybody saying, I will not come back. Everybody says, I want to come back, I'm looking for the next opportunity. We have a great lady, Amy Antonelli, who is in charge of uh, uh, this uh, program of uh, volunteers, and she will elaborate on that. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share uh, my experience with you. Thanks a lot. Do I need this, really? <laughs> you feel this intense amount of love because the, the pictures that you see, that you've seen on the screen, are of real people. And the children that, you, um, that you're working with to teach English and to teach computer skills, um, you're, you're literally changing their lives. Um, I'd actually like to ask Ashley Erickson, who's a member of your class here, to share her experience for a second this summer, and then we'll give Padma the mic. Hi, um, I was really privileged to work with Rising Star over this summer. I worked as the volunteer coordinator over the school. Yeah. We work with children um, not only coming out of homes with little or no education, but they were coming out of homes with um, little healthy food or, or healthy food or little water and um, not adequate medical attention. And as Padma said, that um, a lot of these kids were on the streets begging. So we also dealt with things like that. Um, my time there was very special. Um, it was really exciting to see these kids in a loving environment, um, grasping the learning concept and getting so excited over learning these new things that never existed. Um, <laughs> They always say that one person really can make a difference. And Rising Star is so privileged to work with Padma. And what's really exciting is that um, they really see, they really will see the first generation coming up out of the leprosy colonies and becoming productive members of society. And I was so happy to be a part of that. So thank you. Thank you. And I just asked for uh, if you guys, if you want to come and volunteer this summer, just go to our website, www.risingstaroutreach.org, and you can come and actually work with Padma directly in the colonies. She's going to take a few questions. Before Padma takes some questions, um, I just thought I would read this. This is what uh, one of the women in the art school handed to Padma one day. Um, and it's been translated from Tamil, but she said, with tears of joy, you have given vision to our eyes. You have made us to walk with our disability. You have made our lame hands write and draw. You have brought hope to our lives and driven out frustration. You have transformed our lives. We have nothing to offer except our tears of joy. 
And I think that that expresses beautifully the difference that she makes in the lives of the people that the world has forgotten and made them into meaningful, productive citizens. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask her? I think we have just a few minutes for, we have to, 10? 10? 10 minutes for questions. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, they are selling that like a carpenter can sell anything and people are not afraid to buy that. We have come a long way. There is still a stigma, but they cannot sell uh, eatable items. People will not buy. But within that colony, they can have some stores and all that. But uh, they can make a, a carpentry work, you know, tables, chairs and doors and all those things. And they also paint and the painting is... Uh, when they, I took four of them to Vienna, to Austria, and they were received very well in the painting. They all knew that they are leprosy affected people and they had deformities. So uh, they do buy and they are able to come up in life by selling things, whatever it is. Vegetables and anything they can sell in the market. Yeah. What do people look like for the women in power? Women in power. Okay. Uh, as I said, women's uh, self-help group is a very powerful group. The village women uh, who had never come out and voiced their, uh, you know, what they want and what is their desire, how they, and they always thought, I don't know, I cannot participate, I cannot do this. Through the women's self-help group, we have thousands and thousands of women's self-help groups in the past, over uh, 10 years now in India. And this, there is a great movement there's one lady in southern India. Uh, she, uh, under her, there are 500,000 people are uh, formed a self-help group. And they are all working under her. She is guiding them. She is uh, totally illiterate. But enormous energy she has got. And she says, I can go to collector. I can go to the chief minister. I can go to the bank. I can go anywhere. That much, uh, that much of confidence has been built in because they have to meet once a week, all this... Uh, Members have to meet once a week. That opportunity they never had before. And we bring in uh, the people to come and talk to them about everything in life, about banking, about what is their need, uh, what is their rights, and what is, their, what is the rights that are given in the Constitution. That itself many people don't know. Now the self-help group members have written it in a small, very a simple, in different languages, because India has 22 languages. So, so not all of them can read English. So the way, these are the things to empower them. Uh, and now they go to the banks. Uh, they are able to save money. They are able to do take up business. They really take care of the entire family business, like uh, children's education. And uh, they are participating in uh, decision making. Before that, uh, they didn't have real voice. And we have a lot of panchayat leaders the president panchayat is the uh, is a local governing body and we have all these things are possible only because of women self help group and women empowerment you know i might just add something to that and maybe Pema can elaborate but it's not only the women that have been empowered but even the people themselves um, well, she has this meeting where once a month the leaders of each colony come and they don't just bring their micro lending records. They talk about all kinds of issues that, that affect all the leprosy affected. And now for the first time they're able to speak with a united voice. Well this represents thousands and thousands of votes. So suddenly now when they call the chief minister, they get in because they're a voting block and, and, and the minister is interested in what the leprosy affected want because otherwise they'll make a big scene with this, with this um, committee. And, and, and so the men and the women are becoming empowered in that way. Yes. Uh, apart from volunteering, this is a question directed towards both of you. Apart from volunteering, what we as students can do um, to help widen our views and to, to, to you know, start projects like these and, and more mm -hmm. in, in different parts of India and world, what would you recommend that just us poor college students do? It's a good question. 
would you like to take it or go ahead uh, you know mainly Vicky maybe probably will uh, talk about it what we really need is now we have this national forum if any of the students come and uh, evaluate our program and you know, because you have the systematic way of uh, doing all these things, that will be a great help uh, so to say what is the business program for them and how best they can improve upon it and what are the directions that can. And if uh, any of you, the students, uh, can help us, that will be a great help. Ms. Becky? Well, I have a comment, um, actually. You know, I'm a housewife. And um, now we have worked in India with literally thousands and thousands of people. And I have learned that one person can make a difference. You all are getting some amazing education. And a lot of you in the business school are learning about economic self-sufficiency. Using Padma's um, methodology, my goodness, we're never going to get to Africa. I don't see us in South America anytime soon. Or you are the new generation. You're the one that's going to take out to the world the ideas that every person has value, that every person should be able to realize their dreams and be productive in their society. And you can do what we can't do. We're just the very beginning of this. And so we've, we've just spent this last two weeks across the country at different um, universities talking to people just like you in the hopes that you'll take up the torch and that you will go forth and make a big difference in the world yourself because the power is in you. You have it. If a housewife can do it, you guys, it's a piece of cake for you. <laughs> you could easily do it. Can I ask maybe one more question? Yes. Okay. How about how do you support your teachers? Because uh, teaching isn't uh, the part of the business. So you know, you can't do it all the time. How do you keep in touch with your teachers and then support them? I, I know it's quite uh, hard to talk to them and convince them that they can do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, they live in colonies now, you know. Uh, that is, uh, this is all, the, these people who live in the colonies got affected some 30 years ago. At that time, they could not live in the, with the family. They had to move out to the isolated areas, and they formed together colonies, and they were living in colonies. So it is easy, if I go to one colony, I can uh, address 100 families, 50 families, 40 families. So it is much easier to address them in the call. But of course, initially it was very difficult. As you said, they were not, they were quite skeptical. But later on, once they see nothing succeeds like success. So when they see other people, and I also take all the people who are successful to another colony to tell their story. Instead of me telling them the story, if they tell, this is what I was to begin with, and this is what I have done, and you can also make. So that helps a lot. To answer your question now, we also have another program called Helping the People in the Community, Community-Based Rehabilitation Program. So they live in the community along with the family members, but that is a more difficult uh, process because uh, we have to move out to all these places, maybe travel five miles, 10 miles here uh, to reach out to this one family. But still we want to do it because we want to prevent further formation of colonies. If they are helped in the home, they don't have to come and form a new colony. So this. You know, I have a, just a cute story, very short, about Padma doing this very thing. When I first met her, we went to a colony that she had already been doing microlending with. I just went to meet them for the first time. And er when they saw Padma, everybody came running. Everybody was talking at once, hundreds of people. And from the back of the group, someone yelled out, Padma, I have a gift for you. And the crowd kind of parted, and there was this man standing with his hands behind his back. He came up, and as he came up, big grin on his face, he pulled from behind his back a little three-legged stool, and he handed it to Padma. And by now, he had tears coming down, and she was a little weepy, and everybody was cheering. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> so in the car afterwards, I said, Padma, what was all that with that stool? And she said, Becky, when I first came to this colony, seven years ago, I tried to get everybody together to explain my ideas for micro-lending, but she said, that man interrupted me. He said, did you bring us any rice? <laughs> she said, no, I, I didn't. He said, well, th what gifts did you bring us? She said, I didn't bring any gifts. I brought an idea to share with you so that you can become economically self-reliant. And he said, well, if you didn't bring any gifts, I'm not interested. And he stood up and started walking away. 
And as he did so, the entire colony of several hundred people stood up and started walking away. And she said, if you'll just wait and listen to me, I'll teach you some principles so that one day you could give me a gift. And he spat in the dirt and kept walking. She said, now, seven years later, this man has met us with the words, Padma, I have a gift for you. He had been one of the last to join the microlending, had taken out a very small loan to start his work as a carpenter. And the joy, I have to tell you, and the pride on his face was worth more than anything he was earning to be someone that was of value and of worth. And so it has been hard that she just doesn't give up. She just keeps on. So anyway, I think we're out of time. Thanks so much. Thank you.